understanding of this great work that God has done in us through the ministry of the Holy Spirit. All right, before we begin, shall we? I'm going to talk to our helper. I'm going to ask someone to volunteer to pray for us as we engage our helper in our conversation. Do we have a volunteer? Yes, I'll walk out. I'll, I'll... I'll volunteer. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, let us pray. Okay, let us pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come and uh, worship and um, really just dive into your word. Lord, prepare our hearts that we might um, just absorb everything that you are about to speak to us through your man's servants. Uh, give us revelation in the knowledge of you as we delve into your word. Lord, hasten the steps of those that are coming. And um, Lord, continue to, Lord, just have us focus on you. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 All right, we are in the book of Revelation, chapter 7. We're moving on. We are between the sixth and the seventh seal. And uh, what is written in chapter 7 occurs before the sixth seal actually occurs. So everything is not in, consec in, in consecutive. Okay, everything is not in sequential order. So, as we open seven, it's talking about the ceiling. So, we are going to look at the first eight verses, and I will ask for two readers, each person reading four verses. So, could I have the first reader? Okay, I'll start. Go ahead. Then I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding back the four winds so they did not blow on the earth or the sea or even on any tree. And I saw another angel coming up from the east, carrying the seal of the living God. And he shouted to those four angels, who had been given power to harm land and sea. Wait, don't harm the land and sea or the trees until we have placed the seal of God on the foreheads of his servants. And I heard how many were marked with the seal of God. 144,000 were sealed from all the tribes of Israel. Of the tribe of Judah, 12,000 12, were sealed. Of the tribe of Reuben, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Gad, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Isha, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Naphtali, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Manasseh, 12,000 were sealed. <coughs> of the tribe of Simeon, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Levi, 12,000 were sealed. On the tribe of Ishaka, 12,000 were sealed. On the tri of the tribe of Zebulun, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Joseph, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Benjamin, 12,000 were sealed. All right. So John is taking us to another scene in his vision. 
after he saw the coming of Jesus Christ in chapter 6, the people running from the presence of God, the face of him who sat on the throne, John was given another scene. Unrelated to the coming, really, and yet related to the coming. And he saw four angels. Angels representing messengers, those who were sent to dispatch will of God, standing at the four corners of the earth. What does that mean, standing at the four corners of the earth? Like east, west, north, and south? The four corners, the four cardinal points of the earth. East, west, north, and south. Yes. And they were doing something. They were holding the four winds of the earth. They were restraining the four winds of the earth. What do those winds represent? Destructive. Is it Pardon me? destructive forces coming from destructive it. forces? The wrath of God and humanity. Mm -hmm. Pardon me. I didn't hear the last comment. Oh, I said the wrath of God and humanity. The wrath of God and humanity? Not really. More, more so the wrath of Satan and humanity. Satan wants to destroy humanity. The winds of the earth speaks of strife and destruction, warfare. Angels are restraining. What's going on in Israel? And Gaza right now. You know, angels of God are there restraining the forces of evil that want the whole world to be enveloped in catastrophe. So the angels are holding back the winds of strife right now. The kind of things that are going on in the earth, the earth could explode like a big powder keg political and religious commotion. Unseen forces. <laughs> Unseen forces. Unseen forces are galvanizing people of Earth for warfare. For bloodshed. But the restraining powers of God through the angels is holding back the forces of evil that Satan wants to unleash on the world. I want us to remember this. The Bible says. Four angels standing in the four corners of the earth, holding back the winds. What are they holding back the winds from doing, according to the text? I'm looking on the earth. On the land or the sea, or yeah, on anything, any tree. Right. What did they say to the winds? What did the angels say to the winds? Don't harm the land or trees. Right. We are reading here another angel that's coming from the east or the place of the sun rising.
having the seal of the living God, we'll talk about that in a moment, and he's crying with a loud voice. So all the, the four angels could hear him. And he's saying to the angels, to whom it is granted to harm the earth and the sea. But well, these angels are holding, some, somebody's microphone is open. Please close all mics unless you are speaking. So the four angels who have been commissioned to hurt, to unleash the forces of evil that wants to break on the earth, they have been restraining them. This angel is saying to them, do not harm the earth, the sea, and the trees. He's talking about the people and the environment. Don't do this until we have seen the servants of God on their foreheads. So there's a work going on now that has prevented the full unleash of evil in the world. We can sense the restraining power of God. What happened on January 6th? The hand of God was there. I'm speaking about the United States in particular. The hand of God is there in Russia and Ukraine, in Haiti, all over the world, there is trouble. But the cry from that angel says, do not hurt the earth, the sea, the trees. Wherever people exist, do not allow any of these demonic forces to destroy God's children who still hear the gospel and be sealed. With the seal of God. That's basically the message. Before we get into those who were sealed, we understand the import of the message. It's very important. Because this work must happen before Jesus comes. We can feel the tension in the world. And for some reason, people don't know the reason. They think it's the politicians who are making peace. And But the restraining forces of God is holding back bloodshed and warfare. There's an earthquake that went up the East Coast. That's a joke. So what will happen on the earth if the angels of God let go of those winds that are ready to blow? So let's talk about the seal. The angel of God has the seal of the living God. What is the seal of the living God? The seal identifies God's children. The seal identifies children. And I want us to understand there's only one way God identifies his children. Only one way. The seal of God in his children is the restored image of God in his children. That's what identified them as his children, his seed. Nothing else. His seed. God's purpose is for everyone to be conformed into the image of his son. That's his seal. 
And the Holy Spirit is given the work of confirming that seal in God's children. So we first must identify what the seal is. So when you hear God is sealing people, we understand what is happening. So let's look first at Ephesians chapter 1. And we will read from verse 11. Ephesians chapter 1. We will read from verse 11. I'm not sure if I can bring it up in my Bible here, but I hope we all have Bibles and can go there. Ephesians chapter 1, reading from verse 11, we will see here in him or in Christ, in Christ also, we have obtained an inheritance. It's taking a while for my Bible to populate here. In him also we have received an inheritance being predestined being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things All right, I'll have to read from my other Bible here. I hope you have your Bible with you. Okay, here we go. In him also, we have obtained an inheritance. Notice past tense. We have obtained an inheritance, being predestined or predetermined by God, according to the purpose of him who works all things, that's God, who works all things according to the counsel of his will. That, verse 12, that we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory, In him, verse 13, in Christ, you also trusted. First, the apostle speaks of they trusted in him. Now, we also trusted. After you heard the word of truth, the gospel of salvation, in whom, speaking of Jesus, also having believed, when we believed, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. The moment I believe you are sealed. You were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise when you believed. So we, we know for a fact that those who believed are not the ones who are spoken of in Revelation to be seen. Because those who believed 
were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance, the inheritance of eternal life and all the blessings of Jesus Christ. And we are sealed, pay attention, until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. So the seal that we have received is good until Jesus comes to redeem us from this earth. Are we following? Amen. Amen. So Amen. the day you receive Jesus Christ, the Bible says in John 1 verse 12, as many as received him to them, God gave the right to become his children. In that moment, in that instant, they were born again, not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. God's life restored in the image of Christ in the inner man of the believer. That's his seal. The image that was lost is restored. That's God's stamp. God's stamp on Adam was his image. So Paul writes in Romans 8 and verse 9, anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ is none of his. Write the scripture down. Romans 8 verse 16, the Holy Spirit, the guarantor, bears witness with our spirit that we are God's children. So the Holy Spirit guarantees the seal of God's image in the inner man of every believer. So the seal is nothing else. The only way God identifies his children is whether or not they carry his restored image in them. You will be sealed the day you receive Jesus Christ. Many believers don't know they are sealed. Some are still waiting to be sealed. Something the sealing is an understanding of something. Now, the sealing is what identifies God's children. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 9, God calls himself the father of spirits. When God looks at his children, he does not see them in this natural state. He sees them in the image of Jesus Christ because our real life is hid with Christ in God. The seal of God is the image of Jesus Christ in our inner man. Let's look at another scripture. I'm highlighting a few scriptures here. Let's go to our second Corinthians. And then I'll take some questions or comments before we get into the ceiling that's going on in Revelation 7. We must understand what the ceiling is. Okay, this Bible is not moving as quickly as I'd like it to. So, if you have your Bibles, please go to 2 Corinthians. Uh, chapter 1. <laughs> if you have 2 Corinthians chapter 1, say Amen. 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 Okay. Uh, Second Corinthians chapter 1. Let's look at verse 20. Let's read from verse 18. We read from verse 18. It says, But as God is faithful, our word to you was not yes and no. 
for the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, by me, Silvanus, and Timothy, was not yes and no, but in him was yes. In Christ there is no no. In Christ there is only yes. I'm trying another Bible, so let's see if this one works. Verse 20. For all the promises of God in him, in Christ, are yes. We don't have to wonder. God does not tell the image of Jesus Christ, no. All the promises of God in Christ are yes. And in him, in Christ, are amen. So Christ is the doorway to all that belongs to the Father. As a matter of fact, he said in John 16, all that my Father has a mind. And I've given the Holy Spirit the authority to take what is mine to give it to you. We read that in John 16. Jesus' own words. So all the promises of God in Christ are yes. In Christ, they are amen, they are done. To the glory of God through us. So there is no no one may be with God as far as Jesus is concerned. Now he who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us, pay attention, not he will anoint us. He has anointed us because he gave us the anointed life of Jesus. Christ is called the anointed one. We have the anointing in us already. The image of God is the anointing in us. The image of God is the seed of God in us. The image of God is the seal of God in us. He who has established us in Christ and has anointed us is God. God did it. Who also has sealed us. Not will seal. So when we read Revelation, we are out of that picture. We have already been sealed by the restored image of God in our inner man through Jesus Christ. God also has sealed us and has given us the Holy Spirit in our hearts or in a man as a guarantee. So we have the Holy Spirit as a guarantee. So the Holy Spirit constantly bears witness with our spirit or with God's seal in us, confirming we are God's children. Let me, let, me, let me pull that text up so you can see how God identifies his children. I'm using a different Bible here so it's moving along a little better. Romans 8. Pay attention to this. Reading from verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. See, God's seal is one of obedience because the person is being led. It is God who is doing it. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. That's the image of the devil that brings fear and doubt. That's not what we received. But you received past tense, the spirit of adoption. God sealed on us by whom we cry out Abba, Father. The Bible says in Galatians 4 verse 6, because we are God's children, God gave us the spirit of his son in our hearts. 
by which we cry out, Abba, Father. That's what Paul is talking about here again. So the seal of God is what connects us to God, the spirit of Jesus Christ in our hearts. Anyone who is joined to Christ is one spirit. And the spirit himself, that's the Holy Spirit, bears witness with our spirit or God's seal or God's image in us that we are children of God. And if children, then we are heirs and heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. So let's settle it. The sealing in Revelation 7 is not for those who have already been sealed. Who have received the spirit of adoption through Jesus Christ. The image of the living God restored in them. They are sealed. So Revelation 7 has nothing to do with them. Questions, comments? Pastor, the, the, um, the last verse and chapter that you, you announced. The last verse and chapter I announced. Okay. Romans 8, 14 Romans 8. to 17. Romans 8? Yes, 14 to 17. Okay, thank you. Any questions or comments? Do we understand what the ceiling is? Amen. Yes, amen. Amen. Okay, so I have a question, right? So if somebody is sealed, right? However, they, in the flesh, right? They struggle and like, you know, they go through stuff in the flesh at times, right? Like, is that person still considered sealed? Yes. The sealing is not about your flesh. The sealing is about your spirit. That's why the Bible says, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the struggles of the flesh. If we do not believe that we are spirit beings and that the word of God is our food and we allow the world to define our flesh, then our flesh existence become more dominant than our spiritual existence. The devil uses the world to keep us out of the reality of who we are. But it does not change who we are. Uh, this is James, right? Yes, it is. James, you are sealed as a coombs. Are you a coombs? Yes. What makes you a coombs? So I was born into the family. You were born, you carry the gene of coombs. Yes. Okay. So you, you go down the road and you see somebody who is a Charles, a good friend. And Charles behaves in a certain way and you decide to follow Charles. So because you behave like Charles in that moment, does that mean you are no longer cool, but you are Charles? No. Oh. So when our flesh acts up, it means that we are no longer God's children? No. Oh. But the devil wants us to believe that. So we can stay focused on our misbehavior instead of staying focused on our righteous standing with God. And we spend our life trying to correct bad behavior, which is an impossibility, instead of using our time and energy to keep fueling and feeding the reality of who we are in our spirit. The devil wants us to view our natural life as our reality and to feed, feed the natural life through fleshly behavior. But that's not our reality. So it starts with your identity. Now, could I lose my seal? I'd have to reject Jesus Christ to lose the seal. To reject him as my Savior and Lord. Keith, Minister Keith. 
Yeah, I thank God for this um, because uh, this kind of kind of follows up from this this sermon from this morning about the finished aspect of our salvation. Mm. It is finished, and and for so long we have looked for this futuristic event of a ceiling. You know, I'm working towards the seed. I want to. I gotta be wary that I'm in a certain place so that I will receive this seal. So in the past, it has been one of, I know for many folks, it has been one of fear, uncertainty. But sharing the verses that we shared, you shared it earlier on, realizing that all this has already taken place as we have received the life of Christ as our new life when we were born again. So all these futuristic things that we're talking about, they really don't pertain to us. So we can live with a confidence in who we are in Christ from the identity that the Holy Spirit continues to confirm that identity in Christ. And we can live from that free of fear and anxiety because it is finished. It is done. And we are secure in that with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hold it. Thank you. Yeah, thanks again for the explanation because as I read Revelation 17, I mean seven, as he spoke about the seal, I looked at the seal and I said, I know there was I thought there were one seal. And it did, as you said, we were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Uh, and I noticed that the children of Israel were sealed. So thank you for that, you know, explanation, that revelation. Amen. God be praised. So now, who is this sealing about in Revelation 7? Is that, does it's, that have, pardon me? Does that have any connection? Um, I think it's somewhere in Romans where the Jews were cut it cut off so that we can be grafted in. And this is when the Jews will be coming back, right? I can't remember the, the chapter in Romans. Does that have any connection yes. to that? Yes, it does. Okay. We we are we are in the period called the Gentile probation period. Jesus spoke of it in Matthew 24. The time given to the Gentiles to make an end of sin. All now Gentiles are being sealed, non-Jew people are accepting Jesus Christ. To be sealed, a person must receive Jesus Christ. When we believe, then we be sealed, because now the image of Christ is now restored, the image of God in us. So we are in the Gentile probation period now when the gospel is being preached. But I want us to see that the sealing of Revelation 7 is for the Jewish people, not for non-Jews. It is for people to receive Jesus Christ. Nobody could be sealed unless they receive Jesus Christ. So I want to take us to another passage in, in, in Revelation that connects chapter 7 and the sealing. So let us go to Revelation chapter 14 and we'll see the work of sealing is mentioned there again and it would give us uh, a little more insight into the people who are being sealed. What book did I say? Revelation 14. Revelation 14. Yes. Okay. Revelation 14. So let's go there. I'm searching on my Bible here so I can go with you. Revelation 14. Then I looked and behold, a lamb standing on Mount Zion. Who is the lamb? Yeah. Yes. Jesus Christ standing on Mount Zion. Yeah. Do you know those who believe already on Mount Zion? 
Yes. Amen. Yes. Some people are marching to Zion, but we are not marching to Zion. <laughs> Let me show you a scripture there that will show you that we are in Mount Zion with the Lamb, but people don't know they are in Mount Zion. Uh, while we are at it, I might as well show it to you. How about that? Amen. Revelation 12, not Revelation, Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12. We are connecting a lot of pieces to explain the ceiling, but it's okay. Hebrews 12, reading from verse 18. Can you see my Bible? Yes. 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 Okay, I'm reading from verse 18. For you have not come, it means you have come to a certain place, you have not come to the mountain that may be touched and that burned with fire and to blackness and darkness and tempest and the sound of a trumpet and the words and the voice of words so that those who heard it begged that the word should not be spoken to them anymore. That's talking about another mountain. What mountain is that? Mount Sinai. Mount Sinai, that's correct. Where the law was given. See, that's not the mountain you have come to. Verse 18 says, you have not come to that mountain. Where God came down with thundering and lightning and the people were scared. You have not come there. What does verse 20 say? For they could not endure what was commanded. They could not endure what was endure commanded. What was commanded. And if so much as a beast touches the mountain, it shall be stoned or shot with an arrow. And so terrifying was the sight that Moses said what? I exceedingly fear and quake. I am exceedingly afraid and trembling. So he's talking about Mount Sinai. He says, you have not come to that mountain. Here's a turn, verse 22. But you have come, not you will come. You have come to what? Mount Zion. Hallelujah. I want wow. you all to see it. Amen. Pastor Roy is not saying this. You have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, to the heavenly Jerusalem. We're sitting in heavenly places in Christ, aren't we? Amen. 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 Pay attention to the innumerable company of angels. So the land that is seen among Zion and the angels, you see there's also a great multitude with him. The Bible says we have come there. And we have come to, verse 23, the general assembly and church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven. God got our number. He got our name. Amen. So Amen. Book of five, registered Amen. with churches on earth. Hmm. Amen. But there's one church that Christ is building. He says the gate of hell shall not prevail against it. And if we understand Amen. ourselves, we're already registered there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We have come to this place. The Bible is saying, it's not future, it's now. We have come hmm. to the church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven, to the judge of all the earth, to the spirits of just or righteous men made perfect. Hallelujah. Our spirits Amen. are always perfect because it's the spirit of God. Amen. Amen. It's what identifies us as God's children. It is the seal of God on his children, his spirit. So we are not marching to Zion. We are on we Zion. Zion. Amen. Amen. You are, you are seated among Zion with the Lamb in our mm -hmm. spirit. Because we are one spirit with him. Are you with me? 
Amen. Amen. Okay, so let's go to, to Revelation 14. I looked and behold a lamb standing on Mount Zion, and with him a hundred and forty four thousand, having the Father's name written on their foreheads. It's written there because they're sealed, you see. And I heard a voice from heaven, like the voice of many waters, like the voice of loud thunder, and I heard the sound of harpists playing their harps. So he's hearing things. And they did what? Song as it were a new song. Before they the sang as it were a new song before the throne and before the living creatures and the elders. And no one could learn that song except mm -hmm. the 144,000 who were redeemed from the earth. 144,000, the same 144,000 we see in Revelation 7, okay? These, <clears throat> excuse me, these are the ones who were not defiled with women for their virgins. What does that mean? false doctrines. Pardon me? I thought that yeah. mean they did not, but there was not involved with idolatry. False uh, teachings. False well, gods. In the natural. Also the woman, of, woman in the natural. Also the woman of Babylon. Remember somewhere in Revelation where God tell them, come out of her, my people? Yes. The false teachings. Woman, woman represents religious denominations. Mm -hmm. Yes. Women represent religious organizations. They so have not defined themselves with women in any form of religion, for they are virgins. They have never received Jesus Christ as their savior. They have no connection with Christianity. Hmm. You see, the Bible portrays two women, the pure woman and the immoral woman. The immoral woman is fallen Babylon. And the pure woman represents the church of Jesus Christ. I will make enmity between thee and the woman. Remember that word? Genesis 3.15? Yes. Yes. Okay. So these people are not belonging to Babylon or the pure woman of the church, the church that Christ is building. <clears throat> they have not become involved with organized religion. They are not a part of Christianity. For Christianity, as we know it, is corrupt. They are not a part of Christianity. These are the ones who were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are the ones who follow the Lamb wherever he goes. When the time of the Gentiles is over, and the Spirit of God begins to open the eyes of the Jewish people to behold the beauty of Jesus, the Messiah, hmm and who he really is, they will come to him and they will follow him. They will follow him wherever he goes. Mm. They will see how much Jesus was connected with them and they did not know. They will see how personal Jesus is to them because of the fathers Paul talks about in Romans 11. Because of the promise God made to the fathers, to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, when God passed between the pieces, when they begin to understand these deep connections, they would admire that and admiration for the Lamb. They'll follow him wherever he goes. 
they were redeemed from among men, being the first fruit of God and to the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no deceit, for they are without fault before the throne of God. So those who were sealed, they had no connection. Those who are being sealed have no connection with any organized religion, Christianity or otherwise. Living from God, reality, your hand is raised. Yes, Pastor Roy. So um, this 144, that is from the 12 tribes? Absolutely. So, so it would be like 12,000 each? Absolutely. Oh, another question I wanted to ask. Um, so those are the only ones from the Jewish will be um, saved, will be sealed? That's what the sealing is about. Those who will receive Jesus Christ. So it's a remnant of them? Yes. Okay. Thank you. And we, the world will know it when it happens because when the Gentile probation is over, <clears throat> you will see Jews coming to Jesus Christ in droves. In droves. Some may still reject him. But there are those who will be coming to him. It's a signal that probation for Gentiles is closed. And the Jews are now coming back to God. God is now grafting them back again, according to Paul in Romans chapter 11. So these are the ones who are sealed, who are referring to, who are being referenced in Revelation 7, coming out of the tribes. These are not people of earth, not people of uh, non-Jewish uh, lineage. They have not defiled themselves with women. They have not been involved in religion. No other religion. They remain Jews all their life. They have no connection with any other form of religion. So in that sense, they are virgins. They have not been tainted by different religious organizations. Any questions? This thing is so. <laughs> this is such light and revelation from the misconception that I was taught concerning these one hundred and forty-four thousand. You know, um, and I really thank God for that. So my question is, um, is it possible that there were Jews even this during this period who are not defiled, who are just on the outside, just looking at things? Because it has to begin with some generation somewhere. Um, is that possible even up until today? Even right now, there are some Jews who are coming to Jesus. Right, Jews for Jesus. All right. There are some Jews who are coming to Jesus, but it's not so significant as to what will happen when Gentile probation closes. Oh, okay. So they are congregating quietly or in their houses or something? Yes, there are some Jews who do worship Jesus now. Okay. But there's a greater revelation coming to them when they realize that he was not just the lion of the tribe of Judah, but he is the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. And they see the one that they crucified was really God's lamb. Mm -hmm. uh. And instead of hatred for him, now they have admiration of him. They follow him wherever he goes. Uh. They have not been corrupted with a different representation of religion. Right. 
around Jesus Christ, surrounding Jesus Christ, or teachings about him. Thank you. Yeah. All right, somebody else had a hand raised. Um, was there someone else? Yes, Go ahead I will ask a, a famous understanding that I had before. Um, are these literal, if it's 144,000, that's all that would be saved among the Jews? Jews are being saved all now. No, only 144,000. That's what I'm saying. Now, the many folk argue whether the number is literal or figurative. And, you know, to me, it's irrelevant. Sure. Um, the truth is, God is going to be saving the Jewish people. Amen. Uh, if we take it as a literal number, it still holds. If you take it as a figurative number, it's still the Jews he'll be saving. If you look at verses 9 and 10, we see another picture. John did not only see the lamb with 144,000, he also sees some more people. Could somebody read verse 9 and 10? Verses 9 and 10. After these things, I looked, and behold, a great multitude, which no one could number, of all nations, tribes, peoples, and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. Remember we read a while ago in Hebrews chapter 12, we have come to Mount Zion to a numerable company of angels? Yes. Yes. No, John is talking about this here now. Huh. John is talking about it. Now he's talking about another multitude of people, more than 144,000. You cannot put numbers to this. Hmm. After these things, I look and behold a great multitude which no one could number. So when we compare what is said, you can see one is literal number. You could number them. But this number here, you can't number it. Hallelujah. And Amen. somewhere in that number, you are there. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 Hmm. Praise the Lord. Because you will see when you believe. Notice? He's not talking about Jewish people now. Right. People from all nations, all tribes, all people, all uh, tongues. Mm -hmm. hmm. Standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes. America, yes. Hallelujah. What do white robes represent? Purity. The righteous life of Jesus. Amen. 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 That's the white robe, the righteous life of Jesus that's now defined each person who received him. Amen. They have palm branches okay. in their hands, waving palm branches. What does that mean? Victory, victory. Of course, victory. Remember all the people were waving palm branches when Jesus was riding into Jerusalem yes. on the donkey? Yes. yes. He, the king. Yeah. Mm. So now the saints are waving their palm branches to the king who is a lamb. Mm. To the lamb king. He is also a lion king. Mm. And they cry out with a loud voice saying, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on Hallelujah. the throne. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Bless the time that will be. Amen. Mm. 
And all the angels stood around the throne and the elders and the four living creatures, they fell on their faces before the throne and Hallelujah. worshiped God. Hallelujah. 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 Imagine what a time that would be. Glory. What a time that would be. Hallelujah. There were no Jew or Gentile at that time. They're all children of God standing Hallelujah. before Amen. 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 Hallelujah. All redeemed from among men. Blessings and glory Hallelujah. and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might. Be to our God forever and ever. And Amen. Ever. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. This is hmm. the church of God is building. Wow. Glory. Glory. Hmm. Wow. Wow, wow, watch wow. This, watch this. They're not finished. Hmm. Then one of the elders said, saying to me, verse 13, who are these arrayed in white robes? Hallelujah. Hmm. And where did they come from? Mercy. Hmm. Hmm. And I Instead said to him, me, sir, you know. You know. You know. Said to me. So he said to me, Dead. These Dead. are the ones who come out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Amen. We get there by our own robes. We got there only by His robe. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Therefore, Amen. there is the throne of God, and they serve Him day and night in His temple, and He was who sits on the throne will dwell among them. Yeah. Shall neither hunger anymore nor thirst anymore. Hallelujah. The sun shall not strike them nor any heat. For mm. the Lamb mm. in the midst of the throne and the shepherd them and, and lead them to the living fountain of waters. Hallelujah. And will wipe away every tear from you. their eyes. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. 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 Praise be to Jesus. Keep him in your for a night. Amen. But joy comes in the joy morning. Hallelujah. Tomorrow. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory to God. No oh, more crying. Hallelujah. 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 All oh, glory to God. Amen. What a beautiful, what a beautiful display of God's love. God's mm -hmm. mercy. So you, were, so you were saying now uh, after chapter chapter seven was really supposed to be in chapter six, please. So after this wonderful reading, then we had the opening of the seals, right? So this is where chapter six will really begin in the chronological order. This is not in chronological order. No, I, chapter I, I, ended with the sixth seal. Right. But chapter yeah. seven is really where it's supposed to be chap chapter seven is really where chapter six is supposed to be, correct? No. Chapter oh. six is where chapter six is supposed to be. All right. Okay. Mm. We go to chapter eight, then we see the seventh seal uh -huh. open. Okay. But everything is not in sequential order. He's given these different scenes. Okay. So it's the scenes and not the chapters. Absolutely. Okay, thank you. The chapters are not written in, in, in chronological order. Thanks. And you see, you see John going back and forth with some things. That's why I could see the stealing showing up in chapter 14 again. Even though it is in chapter 7. You know, in the human mind, we try to organize things so we can understand. But God is not operating that way. John does not control the sequence in which the events are revealed to him. He is just reporting what he heard and what he saw as best he could. All right, we have come to the end of chapter seven. Any questions or comments before we close this evening? Pastor Roy, I am sure? not a car. Oh, somebody on? No, it's just yeah, me. Yeah, I can Akisha, hear you. Akisha's hand is up, so I recognize her. Yeah. Um... I know many times somebody has been mentioned earlier on, many times we 
when we read scripture, we look at and we, we focus on something that is to come in the future. And as we're talking, the scripture with uh, the discourse with Mary and Jesus uh, when Lazarus died, and you know, she was talking about the resurrection. And he's telling her about the resurrection. Say, I know, I know, I know the resurrection was one, but he says, he said, I am the resurrection, the resurrection is here. She is looking for something in the future, but he is telling her the resurrection has already come. I am the life. I am the resurrection. I am the living hope. So don't look for something that's way, be, way beyond yonder. It's right in front of you. So even in, you know, the book of Revelation, I'm reading that, you know, the lamb which is in the midst of the throne, he will feed them, lead them, there'll be no more hunger, he'll wipe away the... It's already here in Christ. We already have it in Christ. Yes, there absolutely. is a... Sorry? I said absolutely. Yes, there's a future coming, there's a future revealing, there's a future, but those who receive Christ and living in his reality, this is all reality. He has taken away the pain, he has taken away the hurt, he has taken away the hunger, we are filled completely. And he says, those who, those who feed off of me out of you, he said, will flow fountains of living water. So we have already been led to that fountain. We have already drunk from the fountain. And because the fountain is alive in us, it is flowing out because of this is just who the fountain, this is just who the life is. So it's already here. It's, it's right here, right now. Amen. Amen. God is not now doing the work. It is finished. Christ is a complete package of everything we could ever want in this life. When we take our eyes off that reality, we speak in futuristic terms and say, well, God is working on this and God is working on that, but God is not working on anything. He has given us a finished work. And our role is simply to believe that this is who we are now, the finished work of God in Jesus Christ. God is not Amen. trying to perfect our Adam or the Amen. image we have of ourselves in our Adam. God has given us the perfect image of Jesus Christ. So yes, the blessings are here now. Okay. Karen, I'll take you now, then I'll have Fabia A, and then uh, David Kavar. Karen? Yes. Hi, Pastor Roy. I am so elated to know this because I'm thinking not only of ourselves, we already have accepted the righteous life of Christ, but like my friend who is Muslim, I, you know, while we were going through this, I really got excited that um, he would also be one that would come out because God has been showing him things, giving him things. And I'm just, I'm just excited for those who would be coming out of Islam and whatever other religions that coming into, into the righteousness of Christ. Amen. Amen. Hey, good evening. Amen. What a, what a powerful study. Um, I think, what I'm taking away is, and I'm, I'm not sure if this was touched on in the beginning, but basically Revelation 7 is an answer to the to the question that was stated in Revelation 6, 17, where um, after the six seals opened up, all types of chaos, you know, is, 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 is coming down. And the question is, who is able to stand? Who, who's going to be able to survive mm -hmm. this? And Revelation 7 is the answer. Yes. Those that deal with the Holy Spirit. And so um, I think what I'm taking away is that uh, the assurance that we too will stand when trials come in our life is, is being sealed by his spirit. Amen. 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 Well said. Uh, highly favored. Uh, thank you. Pastor Mike, question is just something that I, I heard today. That's why I, I waited for last. <laughs> um, I heard a father ask a son, 
and this son is no more than six, seven, today at a funeral. Why did Jesus go to hell? Can you answer that for me? Why did Jesus go to hell? Yeah. <laughs> Who sent Jesus to hell? I don't know, but I just found it weird that a father would ask a son that question. And I myself, um, did, I did don't you know. Ask the father? <laughs> Pardon me? Did you ask the father? No. Oh, actually, yes, I did. He said he doesn't know. <laughs> But he thought the child would know. I don't know why. Well, <clears throat> Jesus Christ, when he descended in the earth, the word Hades also means the grave. He descended in the earth to break the prison house of those who sleep in him. So he has the keys of hell and of death. Okay. He went there to release those who were all your life fearful of death. According to Hebrews chapter 2, 14 and onwards, that's why he was made manifest. We read in uh, Ephesians chapter, is it chapter 4, verse 8, he descended and he ascended and he led captivity captive. When Christ rose from the dead, the matter of fact, when he died, many graves were opened. And when he rose from the dead, those people came out. So Christ descended there so he can gain victory over death and hell. So he gave us a complete work that no grave or, or death or hell can hold any of God's children. So, That's is, it so is it correct to say that he went there for the keys of death and hell? You can say that, yes, because he does have the keys of hell and death. Jesus. Pastor, this is what I told this gentleman. I don't know where we came from because in myself, I didn't know. You know, God, hallelujah. I didn't even know if God really did go to hell or what the man was talking about. I said to did him, not, he went not Psalm, Did not Psalm 139 says, if I make my bed in hell, God is there? <clears throat> Amen. Help me. Mm -hmm. God, I thank you. Glory to God. Praise yeah. the Lord. Thank you so much. Amen. So no, nothing can stop Christ. He says, I am he that has the keys of hell and of death. I was he that was dead, and now I'm alive forevermore. I am he who was, who is, and who is to come. Amen. All right. Uh, is it Car Karen? Yes, it's Karen, Pastor. Go um, ahead. Uh, I was always, you know, confused concerning this 144 that, you know, the, the, um, the particular religious persuasion always used to talk about because I, I would always have it in my spirit. I said, so, so what would be your witnessing be if if if, if he's just going to save 144 you know souls so you know how the way in which it was revealed tonight i'm I, you know i guess a lot of people still confused you know because what is is the whole you know what would be the whole thing about trying to convert persons or reconciling people to Christ if then he's only going to save 144 dollars yeah, so. yeah. They, they, they forget the multitude that no one could number hallelujah mm -mm -mm. Amen. they forget that you see the, the Gentiles that are coming in among is in a multitude that no one can number. Uh, let, let me uh hug back to a reference that someone made. 
I could just highlight it here so we can see something. In Romans chapter 11, where Paul is talking about the Jews, where God broke off a branch from the, from the tree. Remember, Christ is of that tree. And he grafted us in. He grafted the Gentiles in as a wild olive. I'm reading from verse 22. Therefore, consider the goodness and the severity of God on those who fell, severity, speaking of the Jews, they fell, but towards you, the Gentile goodness. If you continue in his goodness, if you continue to follow him, see, otherwise you also will be cut off. So if God cut off the natural branch, what about the wild olive, the wild olive of the Gentile people? Verse 23. And they also, if they do not continue in unbelief, that's the Jews, if they do not continue in belief, will be grafted in. For God is able to graft them in again. Right now, Jews are in unbelief of Jesus Christ as the Messiah. But God is able to graft them in again if they do not continue in unbelief. Reading verse 24. For if you will cut off, will cut out of an olive tree, which is wild by nature. In other words, you did not come out of Abraham's seed. You're a wild olive. And you were grafted contrary to nature into a cultivated olive tree. Go take a wild olive and graft it into a cultivated olive tree. That is Jesus Christ. How much more will these who were natural branches be grafted into their own olive tree? So the Jewish people coming back to their own heritage in Jesus Christ. If God could take a Gentile and graft him into the Jewish heritage, how much easier it is for God to take a Jew to graft him back into his own Jewish heritage? Are you following Paul's argument? Amen. 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 Pay attention to verse 25. For I do not desire, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery. It's a mystery. Lest you, I'm trying to say, lest you should be wise in your own opinion, that the blindness in part, not in whole, in part has happened to Israel. Not all Israel, but part. Until, notice this, the blindness has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles have come in, has come in. Do you see that? Amen. Amen. So there's a period of grace given to the Gentiles. When that period runs out, you will see God grafting the Jews back into their own olive tree, Jesus Christ. Amen. Read in verse 26. Amen. All Israel, pay attention, all Israel will be saved as it was written. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Because God will keep his promise to Abraham. He walked between the pieces. Wow. The deliverer will come out of Zion and he will turn away the ungodliness of Jacob. God will do this. The Jews cannot do it themselves. For this is my covenant with them when I take away their sins. Pay attention. <clears throat> Concerning the gospel, <clears throat> they are enemies for your sake. The Jews became enemies to the gospel for our sake. But concerning election, they are beloved for the sake of the fathers. God elected. This morning he said, God told Abraham, in Isaac, your seed will be called. It's not according to him who work or who does not work. But according to God's election, God Amen. made the choice. Amen. Amen. Because of the sake of the fathers, the promise God made to Abraham, in other words. 
So the gift and the calling of God are irrevocable. Hallelujah. Amen. It cannot be canceled. Amen. Amen. All the nations around Israel are gathering, trying to wipe out Israel. They cannot because God will stop them. Amen. 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 If Israel is wiped off the face of the map, then God is a liar. Mm. The promise he made to Abraham becomes nothing. That's why the angels are holding back the wings of strife. Absolutely. Amen. Amen. Verse 30. For as you were once disobedient to God, yet now obtain mercy through their disobedience. So, these also, having now been disobedient, that through mercy shown, they you through mercy shown you, they also may obtain mercy. So God is extending mercy to both. Amen. The Jew and the Gentile. Amen. 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 Praise God. So we cannot boast against the Jews. Right. Because right. we exist in mercy. Amen. For God has committed them all to disobedience, speaking to the Jews, that he might have mercy on all. And then Paul started to talk about the wisdom of God. Oh, the depths of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. God is beautiful. Amen. 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 the mind of the Lord. Mm. Who has become his counselor? Mm. Or who has given to him? And it shall be repaid to him. Hmm. For of him and through him and to him are all things. Hmm. To whom be glory forevermore. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 All right. Anjali, I see your hand. Yes, Pastor. Um, as you read in verse 22, um, it says, therefore, consider the goodness and severity of God on those who fell. Severity, but toward you, goodness. If you continue in his goodness, otherwise you will be cut. You also will be cut off. Can we say with this, if we do not continue, then we are um, breaking the seal? Because um, the seal of God is until our redemption. But if we do not continue to believe, is this saying here yeah, we it's is this a reference to breaking the seal of God? Yes, you can walk away from it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Karen. Uh, yes, Pastor. Um, you said that um, this this is the time for the the the, the reconciliation of the Jews to to, to be the, I mean not the Jews sorry the Gentiles. So after after this time and the and the Jews will be will be you know um going back to Christ or you know being reconciled back to Him. Will will that mean that the, the 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 window of mercy for the Gentiles will be closed? Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's exactly what it means. Does it also? The window is not going to remain open forever, just as the ark did not remain open forever. Oh. The so, door so. will be closed. Right. It has a scripture, Pastor, that says, and them, those who are filthy, let them be filthy. Revelation 22 talks okay. about it. Right. Okay. So that, that's going to reference that. Yes. Okay. Anyone else? All right. 
Thank you again for being here. Thank you for your questions and your comments. We will continue by the grace of God next week with chapter 8, the opening of the seventh seal. Could we have a volunteer to praise God, pray to God, give God glory, thanks for what we have received this evening. Father, thank you for your word of truth, your word of life. Thank you for your resurrected life that is alive in each one of us who have received and have been sealed with the power of your Holy Spirit. Thank you that we are sealed unto eternity. Thank you that as Christ lived, we live, and he has removed our fear, doubt, worry from our mind and given us his eternal peace, and when we live in your reality, live in your truth daily. Expressing and proclaiming and living the righteous life of Jesus Christ before the world, we all will see and come to know the one true living God. We bless and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. Thank amen. you very much. Amen. Yes. Amen. Good night, Pastor. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night and a blessed week in the Lord. Amen. 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 Amen.